Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Engineering Insights webinar for this release. We're going, going to be covering release 0 0.20. And today, Simi Hunjan is with me. Simi is a developer advocate at Hedera. And my name is Ed Marcus. I'm a developer evangelist at Hedera as well. Hey, Simi. Hey, Ed. How's it going? It's going good. How are you? Good. Excellent. So, uh, I, Simi, I think you want to cover the topics for the current release, right? Like maybe some updates to the uh, mainnet and the mirror nodes. Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen. Um, so first we'll go into covering um, what happened or what's new with the 020 release. So this release was um, a pretty light release. There's a lot of work being done around uh, virtual Merkle and um, HTS precompile. It is not included in this release, but um, it will be included in uh, one of the upcoming releases. Um, other than that, we uh, deprecated a couple fields. Um, this relates to the smart contract service. So um, in the contract update um, API, we removed the file ID field. Um, and in the contract call local query, we rem uh, sorry, deprecated, not removed, the max result size and also deprecated the file ID in uh, the contract update transaction. Um, so that's kind of a small summary on what we did in the 20 release. And moving on to the mirror nodes, um, there are two releases um, that occurred in the last month. And so in the um, latest mirror node releases, um, 4043, we added a smart contracts API. You can return a smart contract by its ID. And uh, there's a snippet there of what that response includes. In the 0 0.44 mirror node release, um, there were some breaking changes that were introduced, and this deals with the uh, number of rows that are returned uh, per REST API. So that was changed from originally 500 to 100, and then also the default value that's returned um, was also changed from 500 to 25. And so um, those are some of the notable changes there. And Ed, I'll pass it back to you to talk about some of our hips. Poor sure thing. And before I get to the hips, um, I do want to cover a community highlight. And what I want to show you here is the Hashgraph chest. This is something that we included in the newsletter. But this is a submission that came from a member of the community. and he was trying to put together a proof of concept application demonstrating how he could use Hedera to uh, build a game in this case. And I believe what he did is he used the Hedera consensus service to log the state of the game. So pretty ingenious approach to that. Uh, in this block, he goes in depth into his approach and the modules that he used. And also one of the things that I liked is the lessons learned that he shared here in this blog post. I believe this is also a uh, next JS application that he used for the front end. And um, yeah, just wanted to highlight this one authored again by the community. If you, you can find this blog, if you just Google uh, Hashgraph Chess, and then at the end of this blog, you can get access to the repository. And there you can see more information. You can access the actual code and everything. So. Feel free to uh, clone it on your end and uh, better understand how he used Hedera under the hood. And basically, here's what a game looks like. And he logged, again, the, the state of the game with as a topic with Hedera consensus service. And then he also included a nice chat here for the different players. So that is the community submission that we want to highlight for this engineer, Engineering Insights webinar. So moving on to HIPs that are coming out in, uh, in the near future, so starting uh, in 0 0.21, I want to talk about auto account creation, which is HIP32. This is currently in last call state, so there may still be an opportunity for you to give feedback. And the audience for this one are wallet uh, developer groups or companies. Right. The goal with this is to make it a lot easier to create an account or a Hedera account 
with just a public key, right? And that public key acts like the alias for an account. And that way the user doesn't need the help from somebody else to create an account, which is the current approach. This way, you know, wallets can create the accounts automatically once the first transfer happens. And again, that public key that is initially generated acts as the alias for the account. So if you read the hip, you can actually see the motivation and the rationale and, and understand like all the terminology and hopefully you can provide feedback, but just know that that's coming in the near future. Moving on, there's also this hit coming in release V0.21. Uh, and this is support for ECDSA uh, keys, right? And, and this is just elliptic curve digital signing algorithm. This is the algorithm that networks like Ethereum and Bitcoin use for securing transactions and accounts. And th this is just the parameters for the elliptic curve of that algorithm. So we're planning uh, on supporting these type of keys to enable securing transactions and accounts uh, this way, right? And, and this basically can be useful for smart contract developers that may want to continue existing they might want to continue using existing uh, tools uh, like these keys. Also, if you simply want to secure your account and transactions for your account with these keys, you will be able to in the future and also other uh, network operations. And then I also want to cover or mention two more HIPs that are coming in the future, most likely uh, in 0.22. And the first one is the on-disk virtual Merkle tree. Uh, the goal with this one is basically to virtualize the Merkle tree as an on-disk data structure to support network scaling. Uh, the background here is that each node of the network has to store or maintain the total state of the system you know, at all times. And that state is stored in memory as a Merkle tree. And so what ends up happening is the amount um, of state increases and therefore RAM becomes uh, more scarce. And so by virtualizing that Merkle tree to be an on-disk data structure, it enables a, a lot of benefits, provides a lot of benefits and enables better scalability for the network. Some of the uh, benefits include minimizing the amount of changes. So only the changes that are necessary have to be made. Uh, the network can scale according to TPS and not the number of entities that are uh, in the network. And then it also improves uh, fault tolerance and, and a few other things that you can read if you go to the HIP page. And then the last thing that I want to cover also relates to smart contracts, which is the Hedera token service pre-compile capabilities that you can use with smart contracts. So that will probably be coming in uh, also in release 22 or 0 0.22 onward. And the idea here is to include functionality uh, or HTS functionality with your smart contract. And so uh, initially we'll include some functionality for doing transferring, uh, token minting, burning, associating and dissociating as well. So here is the link to the hip and there you can learn more details. So just wanted to mention that so you know what's coming in the near future. So Simi, I'll pass it back to you if you want to cover maybe some other hips. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, I'll cover um, a couple more hips um, to, to just highlight here. Um, one of them is the um, external transaction signing hip. This is um, hip 179. Um, this hip uh, represents um, uh, a feature request for an RPC protocol uh, that would allow SDKs to sign transactions with external programs. Um, there is still a, a discussion going on for this. If you'd like to add any comments or feedback, um, more than welcome to do so. The last call date on this HIP um, is actually, where does it have the last call date? On uh, the 21st of December, it's right there in the center. Um, so that would be great. Uh, another HIP that I want to highlight was the Ledger ID HIP. Uh, this HIP was also recently submitted in the last few weeks. Um, this actually talks about how the Hedera ne network will handle Ledger IDs. Um, so 
currently there's a temporary specification for how uh, these ledger IDs would be represented for mainnet, uh, stable testnet, and preview net here. And um, it also goes on to talk about how in the future um, these will be um, updated and replaced with uh, permanent IDs. Uh, but for now, um, this is a specification for our network ledger IDs. Uh, we have another HIP uh, that will be returning the ledger ID and info responses. So you know which network uh, you received that uh, request from or response from. And um, the other two HIPs that I wanted to highlight um, that are still a work in progress um, is a HIP for creating a Python SDK and a HIP for creating the Hedera Swift SDK. And um, similarly, you can um, go to the discussions here um, if you'd like to contribute any comments or feedback to those proposed HIPs. And I think uh, those are all the additional HIPs to highlight. Um, did we have anything else, Ed? Excellent. I think we covered a good amount of ground in today's webinar. And so we will be happy to follow up with any questions that you may have on Discord. And you can always contact us directly uh, via email or any of the other uh, social and professional networks. So thank you very much, Simi. Thanks so much, Ed.